So when we talk about the irreducible complexity of the human eye or uh, the bacterial flagellar motor, um, I get all these comments that just say that's, that's bogus because science has disproved the argument for irreducible complexity over the last decade. It's been proven in a court of law, I guess that was the Dover uh, trials, and therefore I am clinging to uh, some argument for irreducible complexity that has been proven wrong by mainstream science. And there's nothing else that's tossed out, uh, but if you dig in, it's based on this notion of co-option. And the co-option theory basically says that uh, when we take the bacterial flagellar motor, for instance, that there were simpler motors that had uh, protein parts in them that were co-opted by more complex motors at the, at the organic level uh, later. So I'll give you an example. The bacterial flagellar motor, uh, which is this little wiggly uh, uh, tail at the end of a little protozoan, um, has 40 different protein parts. Uh, they basically are the equivalent to uh, a stator or a drive shaft or a, or a, a propeller uh, on an outboard motor. So you have 40 different protein parts that all come together, the, together perfectly to create this little motor, this little outboard motor on the back of a, bacterial, uh, a bacteria. Well, the argument is, is that there's, a, there's more simple uh, protozoan-like creatures that have more simple motors. So we take this one with this little pump. It has a little piston kind of pump that has 10 protein parts. Okay, so it's just a little boom, 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 rather than a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that only has 10 protein parts, and each of these 10 protein parts show up in the list of 40 protein parts that make up the bacterial flagellar motor, the more complex wiggly one that can turn on a microscopic dime and go 100,000 RPMs and go the opposite direction in this little primordial uh, goopy world. Well, that is it. That's the argument. That is mainstream science has declared that irreducible complexity that, that, that somehow, you know, that, that's been proven wrong. See, I don't look at co-option like that. First of all, these little protein parts, they uh, have, we now have to go from 10 to 40, which is a huge problem. Um, I have to, the, from a systematic functionality standpoint, I've got to integrate all of these protein parts in an entirely different way. That requires t entirely different blueprints, entirely different information and code to go from a piston engine, a pump engine of 10 parts, to a circular engine, a, a, a outboard motor of 40 parts. And to say that we've now proven irreducible complexity wrong is, is silly at best. And so what I would even argue that it's, it should be the opposite. In, in what we know about genetics, it would make a much more sense that the 40-part bacterial, bacterial flagellar motor drop down to a 10-part piston or pump motor, right? It got less complex. We lost protein parts. Not we went from 10 to 40 in an additive fashion. That doesn't explain anything. So I think irreducible complexity is an argument for design, an argument that things came into being with at least basic organic components in place is absolutely still on the table.